Hey everybody, welcome to another Stoneface Reactions. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and that's Shy, and we're here to watch some more Made in Abyss. Today we're going to be watching a uh, another little short called Pruska and Bone Drood, the short film. Uh, but before we get to that, I think we have a couple of things to get to today, don't we, Theta? Well, uh, one quick correction. The name of the short is actually Together with Papa. Uh, oh, so it is. There's no telling what people do with YouTube titles, so... Yeah, I know. It's uh, it's hard to parse sometimes. I literally have a tab open somewhere on my thing, just to remind me that the, uh, the Japanese for it is Together with Papa. Mm -hmm. But, you know, isn't going to be sad at all. No. So, so what Honestly, are some of the talking points we got? Even if it's, like, the happiest little short, it's still going to be sad. <laughs> Well, because we know what happens to her. Yeah, it's going to be bittersweet at best. I feel like if we got a MIDI short from before what happened. Right. We could be watching, it's all you're going to think about. Uh, what would a MIDI short even be at this point? Uh, drawing. Do you not remember all of MIDI's specific interests, Griff? What I know, a horrible I know. person you are. <laughs> uh... Guy. But yeah, no, we have so, not remembering things. We right? have the uh, breakdown Classic. of the movie uh, from the perspective of the author of Maiden Abyss when he was at the premiere. But uh, before that, we have a couple of comments or bullet points of a comment that someone left behind related to the movie, which I also vetted for the comments below. That the author said. None of them overlap. So, now their stuff we'll go through first. Apparently, Nanachi hails from Sereni, uh, which is said to be in the frozen north. So, Nanachi not originally from the same settlement, town, whatever you call it, that our yeah, main yeah. characters are from. Alright, yeah, we thought that Nanachi was from that little uh, slummy, disease ridden literal underworld before the abyss uh i can't remember if it was episode 12 or 13 we saw them in a like frozen area and i was saying that there wasn't the same area as the town but i guess that's confirmation because i don't think yeah. we ever got confirmation in the movie or anything yeah i just assumed it was winter time i just assumed time passes in this world seasons happen it's fair yeah, so that's just what I thought, because that's the only, like, area in the world besides the Abyss that we knew of, so that was, like, the only assumption I had. Other than wherever the fuck those people on the boat came from. Uh, they, I swear they mentioned the place that they were from, but, uh, of course, you know, my memory, I have no idea what it was again. Maybe it was Serenity. Probably not the same place. <laughs> Alright. Okay, either way, we got that, though. Ah, uh, Bonedrude and his team are situated in the fifth layer. So ascending doesn't cause transformation. It's I, which I guess makes sense if you think they did their experiments. They dropped people, yeah, lower than the fifth layer and brought them up. It's not technically a spoiler, since the fifth layer's curse is mentioned in the first volume of the manga. But the movie will be more interesting if you don't know what it causes. So I guess it causes something else that I don't know. Do you? Uh, isn't coming up from the sixth layer actually blood explosion? No, coming up from the sixth layer was transformation. Coming yeah, up from the uh, fifth layer, what does that do? The the blood explosion. What's the fifth? Like we see that when they climb the staircase. Well, it doesn't happen to them though, so because they're coming up and down. Uh, no, it totally happens to them. There was an entire <laughs> scene where they demonstrate, like, oh, even climbing this much uh, produces some kind of effect. I'm talking about Bone Druid and his uh, Umbra hands. Oh. Mm, yeah, maybe he's just used to that much. It is just one flight of stairs, but... Mm, also... Yeah, well, who knows we, what the rules are? Also, I think it's safe to assume that in his specific case, his armor protects him from the effects, right? That's why he goes up and down all the time. So um, does he sacrifice a kid every time he goes up the stairs? Maybe yeah. we should hold on to that, because that might fall under the other things below. Okay, no problems. <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure Nanachi can help smiling. Transformation seems to have left the hollow with a cat-like mouth. Sorry, yeah, could you, no, that, that could kind you of checks out. That? 
Uh, she can't help who? I'm not sure Nanachi can help smiling. Transformation seems to have left the hollow with a cat-like mouth. Yeah, I've, I've kind of noticed that, but... I don't know. I, I think N- it's more Nanachi's... like her tone of voice than anything, right? And what she says, and like how sarcastic she is about it. She Nanachi is, in some is... way, having fun half the time here. She's a very expressive character. It's just the the facial range is a little limited. Uh, you have to listen to her tone and look at her eyes. Yeah. I'd also say keep in mind that these some of these might be also in response to things we said during our reaction. Yeah. So we might have commented on that. Because I know the next one is uh, based on a comment. Not sure about immortality, but Nanachi mentioned going to the hot springs for injuries, so probably doesn't have a healing factor like poor Mitty. Oh, yeah, probably not. I... Yeah. I think we just discussed at some point if Nanachi had some sort of healing as a result of her transformation. Well, we'll have to wait for her to get injured, I guess. Um... I don't uh, think she has been yet, has she? Well, apparently she, apparently she did, because remember we had a whole conference. What we just said. It had, I don't know, it had to have happened in the movie. A lot of people were injured in the movie. Well, no, I'm saying that she talks about going to the hot spring for injuries herself. So. Uh-huh. Anyway. Uh, the Message yeah. Balloon is an anime original, so nobody, save perhaps the screenwriter, knows what its uh, constraints are. Oh, that's neat. It's anime only. According that to this, feels like I'm not gonna say it feels like a major plot point, but it feels like a significant setting element. So it feels interesting that that was added for anime only. Right. Like I, I think it's cute. I think it does what it needs to, which is you know, give everyone else like something to do or something to react to. So we actually see like <laughs> the surface world reacting to the stuff. But I don't really need to know how it works. It's just it's just cute that it exists. Well, I think that comes about as us talking, like, what happens when the balloon gets caught on something or things like that. Yeah, I do remember that conversation. All right, and the uh, last one from this uh, relates to, I think, uh, Shy and I's debate about the soul thing. Oh, boy. Uh, Let's I th- start that up again. I think both happened. As Nanachi explained to the Abyssal Faith, it sounds like souls travel to the bottom of the abyss where they change form before traveling to, to someone who wishes for life, whom she hoped to be Nanachi. Hmm. I can see that making sense. The Abyss, I don't know. I, it, it's hard for me to even like want to debate that. There's a lot of unknowns, especially when it comes to the Abyss. The, there's a lot of unknowns when you're alive. Never mind what happens after when you die in there. Like, it's... There's just a lot right. going on in this setting. There's just a lot going on. Right, and it would seem to me, like, at least from, like, the context of what the show is, the precise mechanics of the soul are not exactly going to be, like, the magic system we're getting, like, through the second season or something, right? It, it, it's we more... We got a movie out of it, I it's think. It's more the feel out of it, right? I don't it's know. Like, oh, yes, Mimi finally came back to Nanachi. Do you think white magic... Is magic? Mm, nah, it's not real. It's the, it's the way you're saying it. It's like you're talking about spirits and souls. It's like, I don't know, do you think religion is magic? Are miracles magic? Well, in terms of D&D terms, yes. Yes, I do. I don't know. I need to see Nanachi cast uh, Dispel Magic on uh, <laughs> on someone. Nanachi... <clears throat> is an alchemist at best. I don't even know if I'd give Nanachi a real player class. Uh, Bro. I guess I'll, I'll say, like I said, others, uh, framings D and D isn't the best frame to put on everything. Nanachi is a rogue master of iron to subclass. Obvious. All right. Uh, the next part we're going to go into basically the, the breakdown of what the author of Made in Abyss said during um, the uh, the movie release event that he was present at, and how people translated that uh, over Twitter. Okay. And again, I've cut 
a lot of stuff out, not a lot of stuff. I've cut maybe one-fourth of it out, because some of it's not really... Some of it's not relevant. Well, it's not that it's not relevant, it's just... Look, I'll share the links with you guys after, and you can see what I'm talking about. It's stuff we wouldn't want to talk about, we'll just say that. <laughs> um, and for this part, I, if you guys don't mind... I'm going to imagine there's fair a fair number of rag anatomy questions. More than that. Even more than... Oh, oh it gets uh, worse. Alright, yeah, we can just skip over all that then. Um, Agreed. Uh, but yeah, if you guys don't mind what I'm going to do here, I'm going to read the first line I've written out here, and then I'm just going to copy and paste some of it into our Discord chat. And That'll make it so much easier yeah. for me, thank you. Well, also, yeah. so that some so you guys can read some of it too, because I'm not going to survive doing everything myself. Totally. Oh, yeah, understandable. Alright, so the first line... I've uh, broken them down into uh, what they relate to. So, like, I have a field for Bondru, I have a field for Umbra Hands, etc. This one didn't really fit in anything. The author of Maiden Abyss says the flower field bugs are important. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, they are, because um, they, they shouldn't have even been on that level, right? So that means that something something scared them out, probably. Yeah, they and said. These are like and Bone Druid isn't responsible for it either, which is also fascinating. Yeah, they said they came off from the sixth layer. Yeah, I do remember that actually. Yeah, and that means there's probably some kind of invasive species down there that's messing them up, which is probably going to be a plot point, at least as far as like regular nature goes. For next invasive season, invasive species reg. <clears throat> <laughs> Why would they run towards him? Unless they ran away from him on his way up. I will share that one of the bits that I cut out is that they got into his pants. I'm fucking... Uh... <laughs> you know what? Who hasn't at this point? Who in the show has not been in Reg's pants? Leader. I don't like that silence. Leader, yeah, that's fair. That's the one character. Mm -hmm. Liza? We don't know she's that. She's dead before the series starts. What that, do you think? She's we not dead. don't know that. She's not dead. She sent May a message. May as well be in context of the story. We know anyway. that she isn't confirmed dead. Anyway, who wants to read the next thing? It's in chat This big paragraph? This big block? Yeah. I can get that for you. <clears throat> Alright. The umber hands with white coats are the bodies made for battle, and they're armed with really powerful relics. The umber hands acting like robots are just them on auto bondrude mode. Umber hands in auto bondrude mode result in them having all the information coming in, but also makes them slow. Also called cloud bondrude. This is so complex for a movie character. The umber yeah, hands have their the name cloud. because the umber hands have their name because they, bondrude's current body included, are just shadows. The whistle is the light. The body with four arms is in charge of the zoaholic. Mania found the Zoaholic because the relic draws animals to itself, which is why it is well isolated to avoid that. <clears throat> the Zoaholic was not destroyed. The guy in the flower field was especially colorful and confirmed still alive. Like the body with the tail, all of the hands with the white coats are tough. They got lucky that the flower guy, the flower field guy wasn't around. All of the umber hands are there of their own free will. Some are not even delvers. Some are bounty hunters who came for Bondrude's bounty but ended up swayed by him. The bodies that look hunchbacked are actually not that big and are stuffed with something like cotton? Question mark. They aren't actually bending over either. When the second body puts on the mask, it isn't transforming. Just a quick correction. Huh? You said the Flowerfield guy was colorful and the word there is powerful. Oh, did I misread something? I don't know. It's a huge wall of text. I know, I'm trying I know. My best. It's I'm just trying. you did your best. You, you it, <laughs> I'm just bringing it but up because know, it's important. Know. It's important to another thing that comes up Thank later you. that he's powerful. He's also colorful because I say so. I don't want to be wrong. Well, I mean, the light he's hits got him. A colorful personality. The light hits him, and the pigments react into your eyes, and that reflects color. Yeah, so I'm not wrong, okay? <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, there's Very a powerful. bunch of things in there. Uh, specifically, like, um, Bondrude, I guess, is more is his uh, whistle. Bondrude is his whistle, yeah. and he just inhabits anybody. 
Yeah, they have already clarified the whistles do involve a whole bunch of uh, soul shenanigans, so it checks out, right? Right, right, but I just mean if you take that into context of, like, he turned Prushka into a whistle, right? Well, the fucking guy turned himself into a whistle. So, it just follows into our bond route thing of, the man doesn't do anything, he won't do himself. He hmm? is, uh, the way I've read it put best is that Bondrude is the personification of science and advancement at any cost. The He's not dead because that will always be there with everyone uh, even as the characters pass it by. It will, it will not leave the Earth. That is why he is still alive. Contextually and as a story, makes perfect sense. I think it comes up later also why he's still alive. <laughs> Uh, so in which case, let's go ahead and talk about, uh, Bone Druid. Let's take a look at this next paragraph. Let me just, uh... <clears throat> bon is very rich and has lots of relics not seen. Bone Druid's multiple eyes with the tentacles growing out of are a relic. The tail is an extension of a relic called Third Arm slash Third Works uh, that has become part of a body when attached. Bone Druid sees through Nanachi's eyes using another relic, not the zoholic things like some speculated. Bone Druid's line coagulating Nanachi's on setting something free. Congratulations. Upon seeing, uh, oh. Oh. Congratulating Nanachi on setting something free upon seeing Midi's light bulb go out is referring to Nanachi setting herself free from their own burdens, not Midi. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the body killed by Reg was actually, quote, for meeting and greeting and not for combat. <laughs> 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 you killed the greeter. Welcome to level two. <laughs> Bone Druid likes all children. Uh, he thinks dearly both of Nachi and Midi. Bone Druid does get hungry, and he's the one who created ration number four. He doesn't care about taste and only eats when necessary but this is the sort of person who will give a proper answer if you ask what he ate was any good. You can tell uh, from the Blessed Body's uh, last words that Bon doesn't change. Uh, the group did talk to Bone Druid in between defeating the Blessed Body and heading down, and that's where they decided on not destroying the Zoaholic, etc. Uh, they also traded some stuff and spent a pretty long time there. Bone Druid's whistle isn't blown into, he clasps his hand around it to keep it in shadow, and then strokes it to make it vibrate, and makes the sound. Bone Druid's whistle is not a pair of hands, but the two of the same hand. Like I said, when I show you yeah. what I sourced from, this is a lot of combining of stuff that shows up at random, so... Yeah, these, oh yeah, these, this this is a lot of lot of uh, Bone Druid information. That coalesced it all into a category. It's pretty coherent, but gosh, like, it's so easy to get lost. Re like, you'll finish a line and go down to the next one, it's like, did I accidentally skip a line? Am I on the right one? I Where tried to combine a lot of similar <laughs> thoughts that were all said into a single line, so maybe I should have put it better if I just put them in bullet text. Right, right, that's fine. Probably, uh, but it's all right. I think the line, the model was only for beating and greeting, will probably stay with me forever. That is the best line I've ever read. He <laughs> says it. Campaign Griffin's in, there's going to be one or two of them. <laughs> well, he says it a few times. That's why I mentioned the guy being in the flower field, being powerful is important. Mm -hmm. That was a combat model versus the the one that we see at the very beginning of Bondrude being the meet and greet model. Because as you can also see about the Umber Hands, the dude is convincing and sways people uh, about the stuff to come to his Yo, side. Yo! Bone Druid is just Orochimaru, but likable. Oro I said like what I said, Maru, I'm not but taking it back. Actually done. I mean, I'm not I, taking it back, I said what I said. I mean, Orochimaru was like my favorite character for a long time, so I mean... Look, he can be your favorite character from a literary perspective, that doesn't make him a likable person. I mean... I wouldn't mind being in there, is all I'm saying. <laughs> you would definitely be one of those people who's like, oh, yeah, you're offering me something, and all I gotta do is go beat people up? Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's so, it's so, I know you're not gonna want my body. So, so long as I don't yeah. have to go into the fight pit to prove my worth, I'm fine. Yeah, just every once in a while, like, hey, yo, there's this guy over in the Cloud Village, you just go... It's like, yeah, sure, whatever, sure. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Who cares? I've been living. Village ever done for us? I've right? been living in your present house all my life. I don't know anybody in the outside world. They literally did nothing for us. They're the most isolationist country. 
Look, man, I'm just living for the possibility of mortality. So, the fascinating here thing here at the end is, it's two of the same hand, so did he make two and then combine them with his own hand, or what was that about? There's, like, whistles are sculpted, aren't they? There's literally no context for it, so... They're, they're, yeah, it they doesn't seem like there is. You got like, as much information as I could parse out. Like, like think about it, though. The, the white whistle that is Prushka, uh, they said that that's how they come out, and then they have to be changed, right? So mm -hmm. that means it was intentionally carved that way. Okay. Well, you gotta remember, his whistle is him, so... Yeah. Well, every whistle is someone. Yeah. And... They, they, I'm pretty sure they said, don't quote me 100%, but I'm pretty sure they said, yeah, this is what it looks like when you make a white whistle. It's just not quite... Well, right. I only bring up that it's him because it's got to be like, I hope, a special condition because who else can be carrying their own white whistle now that we've seen how a white whistle is? Yeah, he's very, uh, very unique. He's an exception among exceptions. Uh, anything else in there you want to break down? Uh, I think I'm good. Let's go. I think it's really weird that he vibrates his whistle to make it make sound. I don't know how that works. Like, well, you know, a vibration frequency. Um, God, I, 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 I there's something I want to say. It's not coming out of my head. And the only thing I can now think of is like in the old timey movies when they wanted to make thunder noise and they would shake a sheet of metal. Yeah. <clears throat> But you know what I'm getting at, so... Yeah. Uh, I don't know. If any of you in the comments know how to make whistle make it sound by vibrating, please let me know. Well, I mean... Like, just, just stroke it with your hand to make the, it the vibrate. Real if you can is, do that, I'd like to see it. The real answer is they didn't want to draw him putting a whistle up to his mask. <laughs> well, I think it's also that this is the Abyss, and the Abyss is full of weird-ass shit. I'm just trying to get that viewer engagement, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's my problem, is I can't stop engaging. <laughs> It'd probably be better if I didn't respond to this comment, but I'm gonna. I I think I'm good on Bondrew, though. That That's that's the last little, like, what the heck I had to say. Alright. Uh, I'll read the next one. Bondrew and Nanachi survived the incinerator because Reg set it up to not affect living things. The light shrinking is him changing the setting. Uh, Reg is he has settings. Reg is naked when captured, but has his pants on immediately when rescued, because Inachi put them on before picking him up. In case there was <laughs> any, I guess that's a uh, uh, any confusion because he was on the chair fully naked, and the next time we see him, he's coming out of the room with his pants on. Uh, the incinerator can be fired multiple times during the ten minutes before Reg blacks out. I had I I had thought that it made sense to me, but also I don't know if I ever brought it up. I feel like I might have briefly. I don't know. So it's cool like, to have like a it's cool to have a confirmation on that. I think the movie is the first time we've seen him do that, and it might yeah. be hard to take out of context because he just super powered himself on the wire. Right. Yeah. Uh yeah, but that's all for Reg. Uh, cool. So I think the most fascinating thing about all that is that the incinerator has settings, which which isn't anything said specifically in the text. It just entirely has to be inferred there. Because it might be instinctual, I guess. Yeah. That Reg isn't really considering it. He's just like, I don't want to kill my friends. Mm -hmm. Any, anything I, else on that one for you? I'm, pr I'm pretty set on on I'm Reg's good. pants. There's three sentences. I got three sentences on Reg. Yeah. It's all good. Uh, this one's on Prushka. Uh, Prushka did know that Bondrude was doing experiments, but didn't know exactly what they were. Prushka did not know that there were, or did know that there were other children, but didn't know what became of them. If you take a close look at the thing the Nachi puts on the Prushka whistle, the top is supposed to look like a green hat. Uh, Sukushi talks about the black whistle's Prushka makes in the manga version, saying that she does it because she knows what will become of her, and that the Flower of Dawn doesn't exist. They did not destroy the Zoaholic, respecting Prushka's last wishes that they stop fighting. I feel like that's a lot of information that was assumed. Mm -hmm. and I, it I don't necessarily feel like anything involving Prushka specifically in that blurb needed clarification. I thought it was except for Suski. Sorry, I said that wrong and I blurred it out. Ah, uh, is the author. That's the okay. author's name. 
did not I, I also have to, I have to point out the perfect example of Made in the Abyss is we have the thing that your body and soul turned into and we're going to give it a little green hat. Well, if you remember, Pushka wears a green hat. I know, I know. It's like it's this tiny little bit of adorableness on top of everything we had to go through. <laughs> and I don't know. I think the thing here about we can assume part is that this is coming from the author, so you no longer have to assume. Right. It, it's valid. It just it, it feels like one of those things that you understand through context. Like it doesn't need to be said because it's just plain and obvious. But maybe that's just. Well, I don't know that I was assuming that Prushka knew about the other children. I mean, in my head, I think I was thinking, how couldn't she know? But at the same time... In my head, I was thinking, if she knew, I don't think she could do that. Like, I think she would have tried to convince him to do other things. I don't think she would have left. Well, again, that's what our last, well, next to last sentence is saying, that she does yeah. know, and she accepts it. That's why she it let would have it... made her unduly sinister to know and then invite the other main character kids in. Well, remember, she didn't invite the kids. Yeah. So, um, I, guess, I guess it makes sense that she didn't necessarily know what would become of her specifically. That's why I was saying, like, just the first blurb. Um, it's definitely news that she didn't know about that, but that's manga only, so that makes sense. Also, that they're being stored in a vast chamber underneath her, which... She obviously would never go to. Mm -hmm. And what we got here? Rico. Rico goes to sleep with her glasses on, and Anachi is the one who takes them off. Uh, okay. In Orth, going into the depths of the abyss is something everyone strives for. Very few people, the White Whistles, actually go in the end, though. Rico would be aimless if she were to spend her life on the surface. I feel like yeah, no, that checks out. One. Yeah, I feel like we got all that information except for the glasses in episode one. Um, there has been a number of times, I don't remember who has, but it's been said in our reactions about Riku specifically, or not, not Riku specifically. Sorry, I think Wait, other no. people. Yeah, I know it's a hard habit to break. I'm get. I'm. I'm just. I'm helping. I know. By being I, annoying, it would it would help if you had like a squirt gun. And you were sitting next to me, like a cat. Yeah, but you're just gonna shoot your screen. This you can't that, even see it. Yeah. <laughs> um. No, it's been a conversation about why people would go down there, and I don't again. I don't remember who said it, but I've heard it said in our reactions. So this was just confirmation of how the world works. Yeah. Um, and the only thing left is three Q&A questions, and I will just ask the question, and you will tell me if you want to know the answer or not. That's not sure, fair. Let's, let's do it, let's do it. Question, how will no. it end? Yeah, I don't want the answer to that. No, nah, yeah. I, well, that, that defeat, not, not on, this is a reaction channel, that defeats the purpose, doesn't it? <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, here's the problem I have now is that I have to live with the answer. And I will not tell you the answer now that you don't want to know, but I will say he literally gives the name of another anime as the example. Oh, uh, save that one for when we're done, then. Save that for when we finish, yeah, because I'm actually curious now. <clears throat> uh, question. Who is Liza's white whistle? Ooh, that's a uh... I, I'm, I, I really feel like I want to assume it's whoever the father is, but at the same time, she would have already had her whistle down there, huh? Yeah, yeah, Le I, I'm curious. Are you, Griff? Yeah, I, I want to know this, actually. Alright, yeah, let's All hear right. this one. Well, here's where I slap you in the face. Don't know, ask Liza. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I'm not even mad. I'm not even mad. <laughs> not even mad. Oh, we got punked by the author. Alright, last question. What are Reg's insides like? Yes, I do want to know this because I, I uh, like it's got to be some blend of machine and organics, right? Mm -hmm. Answer: He bleeds. They imitate those of a human. Nanachi checked too. Okay, so it's it's mechanical in there, but it looks human. Roughly. Don't know. All it says like, is that's, they that's imitate those of a human. 
<clears throat> his insides imitate those of a he- yeah that's how i'm gonna choose it then it's it's synthetic but it looks right Pro- probably the most rational take on it yeah wonderful does that right. uh, does that does that conclude our that's all of that stuff dump? yeah oh, the war dump is over we did it woo we survived that's kind of fun. I kind of like uh, I kind of like going over the author's thoughts. I like seeing what creators have to say about their stuff. After Trust me, you like going you know? after some of the author's thoughts. Well, I mean, just in general, there like... was stuff that he shouted during that you don't want to know. <laughs> it's all right. There's stuff I... that he said specifically to add to the fan service audience. That would. Yeah, just um, we'll, we'll we'll wipe that from our brains and stay innocent and pure over here. I think. I just really like behind the scenes stuff. Like, like one of my favorite things is uh, this band I like. They put on an album in 2020, and they had like a series of like little like mini documentaries about just each song. And it was like I love stuff like that. I live for it. So this is like fun for me. I can only imagine if I end up like being a creator of any kind, and I get a Q and A like this. It's gonna be like, so why did you decide on this? It's like, uh, I don't know. I thought it was cool. Griff, can I be can I be sincere with you? Yeah. In actively engaging with stone faced reactions, you are a creator. Uh, I will you go. also say that this wasn't an active Q and A. This is like people sitting next to you in the movie theater and recording what you say. <laughs> that's that's kind of fun though. It talks a lot, smells a lot. There his we go. We mother, need more author mystery science theater. His 3000. mother was there and commented about smells as well. Sakushi is a strange friend. Uh, I mean, specifically, they say he's one of us because he laughed at the gore and torture. That's not really one of. I, I mean, I wouldn't count my. We're not in the same members, group but... as those people. No, I am uh, shocked and revolted, but that's why I'm here. Uh, apparently, also the uh, stuff that was made for the movie was specifically made for the movie as well. Because it wasn't in the manga, but they wanted stuff that was like that in the manga. Like, I can't remember what scene it was specifically, but it was said wouldn't fit in the panels. But they made sure that it was in the movie. Okay, I like that. That's fun. All right, then. So I think we've gone through every little bit of text we can here. We've gone over as many for thoughts. I guess now all that's left is to go ahead and watch our little feature short. Yeah, time to ruin the rest of my day. Well, yeah, let's do it, everybody. Together with Papa. A <laughs> Prushka short. Oh, my gosh. We get just the Pushy straight tunes. <laughs> Remember I'm already what happens. off guard. I, I don't know how I could have expected a Looney Tunes intro. Oh. Hi, Doza. Hi, Doza. Hi, Doza. This is. That guy is so done with it. みんな、アンブラハンズになれなかった人たちだ。毎日毎日栄養剤だけで働いて大変なのに増えないなんて辛い。だから作ってみたんだ。ベイビー。自分の分は作らないのかい。私はいらない。<笑> Oh. I mean, that was her dream, go on an adventure. I you know, it's the art I'm mauling at. You know, friendly reminder that these are literal children. <laughs> Straight up horror movement, but for Prushka, just like, oh, hi, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love just all the, the art style shifting going on here. It's fun. 
that a turn without cooking those does not do anything. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's about right for day one of woodworking class. <laughs> He's adorably useless. <laughs> He's just green Rico. <laughs> Wait, they, they they can spider climb? They can fly. It's Patamon from Digimon. Oh, hey! Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> oh, no. Doesn't even have shape while falling, just round. <laughs> それでこんなことになっちまって。ごめんなさい。謝ることはありませんよ。プルシカ。新たなその気持ちだけで十分です。それでね、代わりのプレゼント、パパへ歌を作ってきたの。私への歌ですか。I call it the main theme song. <笑> Actually, Bondrood has his own theme song. Is it this? No. Oh. It's all my <laughs> time, everybody. Time to go to sleep. Wait, he's not wearing the pajamas. <laughs> this is nowhere near what I could have possibly expected, but when did my Looney Tunes become Disney? Not complaining. Seeing seeing Bone Drood in like this happy magical dance is like Sparkling. watching one of the Half-Life One scientists like going on a sock and dance routine. Which honestly I could see. It's simultaneously it adorable if <laughs> like a Gmod shit post. I just love how the small thing is just so constantly confused. <laughs> I like the jellyfish. Bring them back. <clears throat> Why did she fall asleep? Oh, <laughs> she fell asleep to her for him. Thank you, Purushka. Thank you. Of course, the goblin has to clean it all up. <laughs> Oh, the absolutely precious. <laughs> and then straight back to Looney Tunes. <laughs> there is no room for purity in this setting. <laughs> and, and Theta, this was like uh, on the DVD, right? For like between movie or something. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that versus the the other shorts we got. Just the tone shift from the series as a whole. <laughs> 
Oh, it just it just gets me. It is so absolutely adorable. Top comment on this video is best dad. He even made her a white whistle in the end. <laughs> they ran out of PTSD budget. Oh jeez. Uh, <clears throat> what 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 do you think? <laughs> what do you got to say? I don't know. It makes me sad. You guys were I, laughing like crazy, and I was like, Brooke is my second favorite character because of the movie, and mm -hmm. I'm just putting everything I'm seeing in context to the oh, movie, yeah. and like feeling tears well it up, and then this year I've got Griff laughing like a maniac, and it's like, I want to say, Griff, shut the fuck up so I can enjoy this in the little way I can, and it's like, no, this is a reaction channel. Just like sit absolutely. in silence. <laughs> You're Beta. absolutely right. <laughs> but... Be not sad that she is gone, but be happy that she was. Don't give me that stupid shit. <laughs> Yo! I enjoy, I know what you're saying, and I enjoyed her life while I had her in it. But it's just like... No, for real, though, I totally get it. I, I just forgot to be sad because it was so happy. <laughs> well, see, I, I don't know. I, the beat of the sound wasn't happy either. It was... I mean, it was... Um, God, my brain isn't working like today. A sweet lullaby. It, yeah, it's melancholy. I would say melancholy is the word I'm looking for. It's very. I love our time together, but it has a uh, a tone to it that would also work in a I have lost everything kind of musical. And but I'm just thinking back to the movie where we see her as a survivor of a crash, and how she has to get weaned back into. Being a person who can come out of their shell, like, uh, was it Minya? By the way, you should remember that name, Griff. It's going to come up again in season two. Because we saw Minya go with them into the pod. Right, uh, I, I yeah, got to get the wrong name. I'm trying not to call, call it Padomon all the time. Minya had to wean her. I'm going her. to call Padomon. Minya had to bring Kushka out of her shell. Otherwise, she wouldn't even talk. Her eyes wouldn't focus. She was a complete mess from the accident. And from there, and interacting with Bondred, is where she started coming out of her shell to become that person that we see in this musical. And then from there, to have everything happen to her that we see in the movie. Mm -hmm. It's all very much just like layers upon layers. It's a weight on my chest. So... Right, yeah, the actual contextualization of like getting this happy little short just makes the tragedy we've already witnessed even more tragic. And it's that sort of dark humor to the entire setup that like absolutely gets me, because this is the most precious little short, and if you just saw it apropos of nothing, you'd just be like, what a cheerful little fantasy world where it's a daughter and his father. But, but we know what happens, and it's awful. I think there's Honestly. something to be uh, said about me, is I'm very base. You are base, this is true. Yeah, I take everything. <laughs> I just, it was very happy. It was hard to be sad looking at it. That's what made it sad. I, I, I literally <laughs> forgot to be sad. I legit forgot that I was supposed to be sad about it. I was just like, this is really nice vibes. I really needed this at the end of my day. We're seeing this girl um, in the best moment of her life, knowing what came before and what's to come after. And then that, it's like um, being at a hospice, right? It's like being at a hospice and you're there to celebrate someone's life. You know what's coming. You're in a hospice. So, it's hard to not both try to be happy, and at the same time, knowing that you're sad. Like, I hear right. you, but I'm in my bedroom, and I'm pretty fucking comfy, and so is that short. This is my bedroom as well. Griff and All I I'm at least say, have beds in ours. All I'm gonna say is, there's something that... I'm I thinking now, the because of the short that I'm never going to get, and it's going to be Nanachi with a Looney Tunes theme going, what's up, Doc? I'm never going to get that. You know, Shy, oh, given your green though, screen that, like, and, slight nasally voice. given your green screen type effect, you could literally jump into the abyss. I, like, that's your where bed's I right sleep. there. I sleep in the abyss. No, I just mean your bed's right there, right? So, conceivably, yeah. Oh, well, they're Woo! going to the abyss, then. Yeah, well, sure we lost works. one of our co-hosts, so... Oh, you it, lost your headphones, too. It, it sort of worked. 
Hey, I tried. I gotta, I gotta get that content, the drip content. I'm sure if there I remember go. to do so, there'll be like half of a second where I can freeze frame, where you'll be leaping into the abyss. One of our merch shirts has to just be us two standing at the top of the abyss while you're just leaping in. <laughs> 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 I, I, I'm gonna I'm be real with you if my life was what Rico's was I'd probably just say fuck it let's go on the abyss if I die a horrible <laughs> death you know at least it was more interesting oh, I'll say here the orphanage. I'll say here one of the other things I didn't clip from that long thing is that Rico was eating a wall before just, just like a wall I'm not saying That's like all, a folks. I'm not saying like a full wall but apparently that's like, how like, hungry like, you get. Like, my room has walls, and she ate one of them? I mean, like I said, not like a full wall. Like, it just a piece of wall. Because something that the author hungry. said that we ate a wall. Can I be honest with you guys? She looks like she eats drywall, so... Oh, there we go. Ugh. Like one of like you, you guys, you guys notice that she often has some frames where one of her eyes is over here and the other is over here. I just kind of chalk that up to like anime eyes being absolutely huge. So I mean, that, that is what it is. Happens because perspective. But like I'm, I'm like, damn, she looks like she's hungry for some drywall. <laughs> uh, I'm not craving. here. I'm not here for it. I'm not here to make fun of these people. I love them so much. Remember the last time. The remember the last time you made fun of uh, a person for their appearance, and it turned out no. that they were in a horrible accident. Which one? Prushka. You made fun of Prushka's head, and it turned out it was the result of the accident she was in. I mean, she does have a funny head. We didn't see her head Look, before man, the accident. We gotta be. We gotta be a little bit more welcoming about people. Let's I make the world Prusha. a better She's place. One of the best characters. I will always welcome Minecraft, Steve. <laughs> what? The square heads. I'm making fun of the square heads. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. Look, I love Canadians and the way that their heads open up upside down. I love the flappy heads. They're funny. All right. So I think that's all we got for this little short here today. This has been a fun time, and uh, this has been Stoneface Reactions. I'm Griffin, that's Leda, and that's Shy, and we'll catch you all next time. See you, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching another Stoneface Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below, and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?